Okay guys, so if you're watching this video, you should have collected data for the Hooke's Law Lab. So your data sheet should look something like what appears on the screen in front of you. So you have in column B, the stretch. In column C, you have the amount of force. Okay. In order to graph the force versus the stretch, you're going to highlight the entire data table. When the data table is highlighted, it will turn a bluish color. That way you know all your data is selected. Make sure that in your columns there are no units. Your columns only have numbers in them. Your titles, however, should have those units. If you do have units, make sure you take those out before you begin to graph. So once your table is highlighted, you're going to go up to the top, the toolbar, underneath uh, Hooks All Lab. You're going to click Insert. You're going to go down to Chart, and you're going to click on Chart. So what shows up, what pops up over to the right is a menu. That menu chooses a type of graph that it thinks that you're, you will need based on your data. In this case, it's wrong. So you see right under data, it says chart type, column chart. You're going to click on that menu where it says chart type. When you click on the arrow, it'll expand to a drop down menu. You want to scroll down until you see scatter plot. When you see, see the scatter chart, you're going to click on that option. You'll see that your graph changes accordingly. Okay. So before we move on to customizing our graph, in that same menu, underneath chart type, you then see data range. Underneath data range, there's then the x-axis and the series. Next to x-axis, double check that the data selected is x in meters. And for series, or the y-axis, double check that the data for force is selected. So you should see x-axis x, series, or the y-axis force. Once you check that and the data is okay, you're going to go in that menu under chart editor and you're going to click on customize. Once you click on customize, you're going to go to the second option, that, that second drop-down menu, and click on chart and axis titles. So click that arrow, a drop down menu will appear. Right underneath chart and axis titles, there's a type option. You're going to click that drop down menu, change the type, the uh, type to chart title. So click on chart title. So it gives us a chart title. We want the title to be as exact as possible so that other people reading it know exactly what data you're displaying here. So we want to change the title of this graph to force versus displacement or stretch. Okay, we want to make the system specific. So this specific system is a spring mass system. So before force versus displacement, you're going to going to want to add spring mass system force versus displacement make sure you just spell displacement right graph you see once you type that in it'll load right on your chart for you Next, in that same column, under Chart and Axis Titles, we want to create an X and a Y axis label. So we're going to click next to Type, where it says Chart Title, click the drop-down menu, head down to Horizontal Axis Title. Our horizontal axis, the information here on the bottom, is giving us our displacement or our stretch. So we want to label that X. 
in meters, or we could alternatively label it stretch in meters or displacement in meters. Okay, now to our y axis. So again, go to type, hit the drop down menu, go to vertical axis title. On our y axis, we have the force exerted, measured in newtons. Notice how it changes right away your axis label. Okay, so now we have a title, we have axes labels. We can get out of that section of the customized menu. We do, however, need a trend line. So what we're going to go to next is under Customize, you're going to hit Series, right underneath where we were before. Once you open up Series, you'll see a few options. You want to go down to where you see the three check boxes. You want to click Trend Line. Based on your data, it's going to click it or um, establish a trend line that it thinks matches your data best. In this case, it's correct. We want a linear trend line. We need one other um, piece of information here. So underneath trend line, we have type, line opacity, and then label. Underneath label, you want to click that drop down menu and choose the option use equation. You'll notice that on your graph in the legend, an equation will appear um, in the form of y equals mx plus b. We're going to use this slope in a little bit to describe our, our spring in more detail. OK, so once you have your title, axial labels, you have your equation labels, you can minimize the series option. You can obviously make more edits to your graph. So for example, grid lines. If we want more grid lines, we can have that option. We can go down to, sorry, let me get back to that for a second. We can go down to grid lines. Uh, we can choose vertical axis, horizontal axis. So let's do with horizontal axis. Major grid lines, you can play around with it to add more or less grid lines. You can go to the vertical axis and again add more or less grid lines. Okay, and once you have your data all labeled, your graph looks um, nice and neat and you're happy with it, you're going to take this graph and control, sorry, excuse me, command C, go to your lab report, and command V, paste the graph, you want to click unlink in the actual document document for your lab report. Okay, next you're going to move on to trial 2 for the elastic band. You're going to determine based on the data that you have what the elastic band also follows Hooke's law. Okay, so that's how you graph your data. Uh, good luck!